where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. My name is Justin Blinko. Today, I'm honored to have Marie McGrath onto our show. Marie is the founder of the Joy of Fashion blog, which she created in 2009. She also has a TV show called Lifestyles and blogs for Metcom, the largest producers of entertainment content in Panama City, Panama. She loves fashion and Oreo cookies. Marie, welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm very excited for this interview. To start out, could you introduce yourself and, and tell us a little, little bit more about you? Yeah, of course. So, well, like you said, my name is Marie McGrath. I'm 27 years old. I was born and raised in Panama, in Panama City in Central America. I, you know, I do a lot of things. I grew up doing all sorts of different activities, but I was always drawn to that, like, fashion side. So I knew I always wanted to be in that business. That's how I got into blogging um, as a way to have a connection to that world that I enjoy. And so I have my blog. I have my show with Medcom uh, Lifestyle. I have a blog on their website as well. I do different types of jobs in the fashion world, like styling and that type of stuff. And I'm also, apart from that, working in a company that's owned by my family that sells construction and tool equipment as a manager and a logistics purchasing type of administrator, just call it that way. So I do a little bit of everything. Got a lot of things going on. <laughs> and tell us, what do you do on the Joy of Fashion blog? Okay, so I started it as a way for me to share my ideas on the just specifically on the fashion side of things at first. And I like to post photos of my outfits, uh, what's trending, you know, tips on how to dress with style, things that people could actually use in their daily lives, a fashion that is accessible uh, versus what you find in magazines where most people can't afford that clothes or their not, bodies don't look that way or that type of stuff. So I wanted to have a, a place with content that people could actually use and benefit from. And then that went uh, progressing into more than fashion. I also do beauty posts, you know, tutorials. I also do a little bit of um, crafts. I do a little bit of everything. It tra transformed more into like a lifestyle type of blog. Um, so I have all sorts of content there for people to tap into what they're most interested interested in. Throughout the seven years of the blog, what have you learned about content creation? I've learned many things. Uh, I I start. I mean, nobody really teaches you how to, you know, do a blog. I mean, you could find tutorials and tips and stuff online, but really, you don't have someone behind your shoulder telling you this content's good, this content's bad. So I've had to learn and roll with the punches. What I've come to learn is a lot about like search engine optimization. I've learned that it's important to create content that's original and that is consistent with a branding. So I, for me, the success of any fashion blog and probably many businesses in general is all about having a very clear concept about what your brand is about, who you're offering it to, and being consistent with that idea. So for me, I, you know, I decided that my blog was going to be about Fashion, yes, but it had a, I wanted it to be a perspective that was very fun, very colorful, very uh, positive, girly. You know, you, you kind of have a set of words that you like to use to describe it. And then every content that you post or that you present to the public needs to follow the guidelines of that brand. So that has kind of, that idea has kind of transformed the type of content that I offer because I want to make sure that I'm consistent with what my public is expecting from me. And now, since I've followed you, I've seen you get featured by a number of U.S.-focused outlets. How has running the Joy of Fashion from Panama either helped you or hurt, it, hurt you or given you additional challenges to jump through? Yeah, so what's interesting is that uh, when I started blogging back in 2009, Panama had no idea what blogs were, you know, they had Did you create the first Panamanian blog? I sadly did not. Oh, it's up to debate. There's someone here that says that she was first, but nobody knows for sure. But I was, I'm definitely between the first 
five or ten, let's say, of the ones that take it seriously, obviously. Right. You know, who knows if there's some hidden blog somewhere. But um, back then, you would tell people here in Panama, oh, hi, I'm a blogger, and they're like, what are you talking about? Versus other countries like the U.S. where blogging has become a, has been a huge industry for many, many years. So the benefit of that locally is that I can be a big fish in a small pond. It's easily accessible for me to become somebody and become a successful fashion blogger nationally. Now, the challenge of it is that on the international appeal, uh, the number of followers or the number of traffic I get is less because my country is smaller. If you, if you look at it by numbers, it's smaller, so I have less people that could follow me nationally. Um, but if you look at it by percentages versus bigger countries, then I'm doing pretty good. So it, it, it kind of becomes a challenge to be taken seriously from co uh, companies or brands internationally. But in the Latin American uh, scene, it's been great because I, I got on the wave when it hadn't really hit yet. So I easily became one of the top bloggers here just because of lack of competition. So the people who start coming in now are people who are fresh and don't know what they're doing, where I have, where I already have seven years of, of experience behind, below my belt. I think that's the same. <laughs> not sure. Under your belt, um, I think. Under my belt. Whoops. I'm going to play the Panama card here. I speak <laughs> Spanish. Sometimes I mess up. Um, so, yeah, it's. I think it's definitely better than it. I think it's more advantages, has more advantages than negative things. Um, because it's really allowed me the opportunity to work with great brands locally and internationally, just because if you were going to look for a Panama blogger, there really is only like 10 that take it really seriously. And I'm one of the 10. So those are great odds. <laughs> so I take full advantage of that. And, and it really is a, a great opportunity. So I would say it's good. That would be my conclusion. It's good. <laughs> And how do you work with these brands? Are they paying you to promote their stuff? Or are they giving you free stuff? Or how does that work on a fashion blog? Okay, so that is, um, it, there's different ways to work with brands. The most important thing, though, is that the content really needs to be natural and organic. It can't look too promotional. Because as soon as you look too promotional, then you become a magazine and people do not trust the message you have to convey. So, for example, if brands want to work with by giving me free products, it would have to be a brand that I feel um, I would only promote the product, even though they give it to me for free, I might not necessarily post about it, unless I feel like it's a product that goes according to the brand. Again, it always goes back to the branding. It has to be a brand, it has to be a company that I feel makes a good fit with what people are looking for, the content they're looking for on my website. So they can for example, offer me free products or I can create campaigns with brands, which is what I usually do. Um, let's say a local boutique wants to promote their products. So I create a little marketing plan where I'll wear their, you know, their, their dresses and their hats or whatever in my photos. But I won't necessarily say, hey, you should go buy this because that would be too commercial. And people in the, the readers of blogs want very natural, organic, non-commercial content. So there's, it's, it's a difficult thing to balance. But if you really grasp um, how to make it work, there's a lot of opportunities to work with brands. So, yeah. And what have you learned about content distribution? What, what did it take to get start gaining that large audience? Are there any tips that you have? Yeah, so uh, for content distribution, I do I do like to do some statistics on my blog. That's been very useful. I use Google Analytics for the website to see what content people are mostly interested in, what time it is that they're mostly visiting my blog so that I try to post at those times or what days, uh, what words people are looking for Google on Google, what's trending. That type of information is essential in order for you to really get some feedback from your audience on what do they like, what are they responding to, and then you create more content of that type. On the same way for Instagram, which is another big part of, of my blog and blogs in general, uh, you can also use statistics to, to understand what it is that your readers are searching for. And once you really know that, then it becomes a lot easier 
to create content and to take the most advantage out of the content that you create in order to maximize the number of followers or readers that will read, you know, that will be exposed to it and that will respond positively. So that's kind of how I've done it. Uh, I've kind of learned with time what works, what doesn't work, and whatever works you do more of, whatever doesn't work you drop. And that's kind of how I've gotten where I am now. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the story about how you got the TV show? It seems like a pretty cool accomplishment. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. That's pretty new. Um, we've been talking about it for like six months now, but it's or maybe longer. Um, but it finally is out. You know, it already is published. That started because I was already working with Metcom on a. We I have a blog on their website, like a mini blog, that I publish on every week, and one of the people that what I would work with at Medcom had this idea of a show that would um, have, it would be about lifestyle in general, but, mo but more centered around fashion and fun things to do in Panama. And she pitched this idea to me and I was in love with it because really it's a, it's almost like a video representation of what I'm already doing on my blog. And they have the means to create the right quality of video that I would like. So we decided to work on it and we, we, we did a lot of ideas and it just, you know, it's just started. So hopefully it'll do well. I'm sure it will. I hope so. Thumbs up for that. But it's, it's pretty exciting to see how the blo my blog, which was just a little hobby I started in college, has developed into this whole other side business that I can do on my free time and that I enjoy and also gives me some income too. So that's great. And makes you a national star at the same time. Oh, I, that I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it's baking, so we'll, we'll see how it all turns out. Yeah. So I want to ask you one more serious question, then we can talk about something that you would probably enjoy to talk about a little bit more, which is fashion and shoes. Ooh, okay. So um, how, how would you say that being an, a fashion entrepreneur has affected your life. You know, you, you kind of just got into it a little bit, but um, has it brought you freedom? Uh, has it enlightened you? You know, how would your life be different if you didn't have this? That's a very good question. So since I would, uh, for me to, in order to, to answer that, I kind of have to say a little story. I won't make it too long. Um, ever since I was small, I, um, like I said, I've always been interested in fashion. It's something that I enjoyed. And when I was a teenager, I started doing modeling here in Panama, which I liked because it was in the modeling industry, I mean, in the fashion industry, which is something I enjoy. But I didn't like the fact that I had to work under somebody else's rules and their, somebody else's vision. So as a model, you don't get to choose what products you're, you're backing up or what, you know, what image you give out the pup to the public of yourself. And I found that to be very limiting, and uh, I decided to stop modeling. I went to college, and I always knew that I was going to work in my family business, which sells tools and equipment, which is like the anti-fashion. I mean, if you could think of anything less fashionable than construction equipment, uh, please let me know. But um, <laughs> Power so tools and frilly dresses. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's pretty ironic that that's how, what I work in. So I really was like really searching for a way for me to express that love I've always had for fashion and personal style, but that it would also fit in my under my rules, under my vision, where I would be the creator of the content, where I would be in control of the message that I delivered to people. So that's where the idea of the blog came up. And it's been great because it kind of allows me to have my cake and eat it too, I have my eight to five job uh, with my family, which I enjoy, even though it's not fashionable. It's something I really enjoy doing. And then when I clock out of there, I can work on my blog in my own time and I create content that I'm passionate about versus doing content that's someone else's vision. And apart from giving me incredible um, satisfaction, something I'm passionate about, it gives me a lot of satisfaction to do this. It has also given me great opportunities. You know, I've met a lot of people in the fashion industry that I 
looked up to. I've worked with brands that I've always liked. You know, I, I create content on on Medcom, which is like a dream to to be a part of the biggest inter- entertainment company here in Panama. And it's really um, personally fulfilling to see how my hard work has gotten me to this point. And it's all been me, you know, because the blog is 100% percent my my baby. I've done everything on it, everything. So um, it's very it's it's very um, inspiring to myself to see that if you set up a goal, you can really achieve it if you just work hard enough on it. And um, I I only see it growing and growing and having more and more opportunities. I mean, I'm, I'm even going to Miami to a, a conference of Revlon next week, which is amazing. It's international recognition to be chosen as one of the two representatives of Panama for that. So it's it's really um, liberating to know that people have that opportunity to create their own their own job, you know, their dream job. You can do it, and um, it isn't it isn't just words. I'm actually living it, so it's pretty amazing. Awesome answer. Really, Thank you. Really nice. Um, so let's talk about what's in fashion in 2016. <laughs> I certainly don't know, so uh, <laughs> lightness. Our audience tends to be entrepreneurial and technically focused, so probably also not f- fashionable, but um, we have a little bit of everything. So. Oh, so, okay. Well, to be completely honest, I really don't know much about trends. I've never have. I don't really look at runways or anything of that. I, I um, like to, to wear my own trends, I guess is the way to say it. I kind of march to the beat of my own drum. Um, but there are certain things that never go out of style and that's kind of where I gear to, you know, wearing really bright colors, playing with different, um, how do you call different shapes of pieces according to your body. Um, I like to mix it up. I like to sometimes if I wake up feeling really girly, I'll wear a pink frilly dress and sometimes I'll wake up feeling really rock and roll and I'll wear spikes, you know, I think that following trends is really overrated because trends come and go, you know. It's more important to have your own personal style that you live by and that you enjoy and that's original. And that's what really inspires people is that you would be, you know, that you're not following someone else's trend. You're creating your own trend. So that doesn't really answer your question, but that's the best answer I can give you because I really don't know what's trending right now. <laughs> well, I'm it's okay because I don't either. The fashion trend. That's what I'm wearing. Well then, maybe you could. Maybe this is a better question for you. If someone doesn't know much about fashion but wants to start curating their own style, like like you've done over the seven years on the Joy of Fashion blog, mm-hmm. how do you start to curate your own style? How do you test things or, or figure out what what you like? Okay, well, I would say it begins with knowing your body type and knowing what type of shapes look good on you. And that's actually something quite easy to find out. Uh, you can find tips about that all throughout the internet. Uh, you you know, once you know, like for example, I'll use myself as an example. I'm a pear shape, which means that I have a small waist, but I have large hips. And um, based on that, I know that you know A-line shaped dresses look good on me. I know that shorts in a certain shape look good on me. And once you've got the shapes down, once you figure that out then it's easy because you just have to pick colors that you like or neutrals that you like or, or you know, prints that you like. But basically the pieces are always the same shapes because those are the shapes that really show the best part of your body and give you that, you know, the shape that, you know, the hourglass shape that you want. So I would start from there. And I would also say that anything that you have in your closet that you put on and when you put it on, you, you don't feel good in it, you should get rid of. You should only wear clothes that when you put it on, you feel fabulous because people think that you only dress well for special events. And one of the things that I've always pushed on my blog is um, a saying I invented when I started it is, uh, let me think, it's every day is special and every day deserves a good outfit. And the reason why I say that is because people really underestimate the effect that the clothes they wear or the image, the physical image they portray has on how they feel. If you, if you feel good about how you look, uh, it really does make a big difference on how you tackle your day. So I try to, and it has nothing to do with whether you're in shape or aren't in shape or whatever. It's just about 
wearing something that you think looks pretty and that makes you feel confident about yourself. And you can find that no matter what shape or color or whatever you are, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's just a matter of, uh, liking what you wear, what you portray. So that's how I would start. Cool. Um, so founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg wears, I think the same thing every day. He's famous for having his, you know, his, his blue hoodie and, uh, has talked about, uh, and had a lot of people emulate this, um, thought process that mm -hmm. having to think about what you want to wear today creates decision fatigue. You know, you start your day, oh, what am I going to wear? And you can only, uh, make so many decisions per day. So to maximize his ability to run his company, he says, all right, I'm just going to wear one thing. What would you say to Mark as he's thinking about this decision? I would say that that is a very dull choice. <laughs> I would say that he's taking the easy way out. That sounds to me like a really lame excuse to not put any effort. And I, I would beg to differ that making a good outfit really takes that much effort. I mean, you, if you're a girl, you could literally just wear any dress with the same pair of shoes and it looks great. It isn't, it isn't only about what you wear. It's about how you feel about it. But I wouldn't, I would, I mean, I think he's going to an extreme on wearing the same thing every day. I mean, what would make one day more special than the other? You know what I mean? Like how he would have, he's portraying as if his feelings and his, his, um, how do you say his mood of the day is always the same and that's impossible. I mean, his mood of the day is not always the same. I mean, dressing is a way of expressing oneself and he's, um, not allowing himself to do that. And I think that that probably affects him in different ways, maybe not work wise, but personal, personal wise and mood wise. So I tell him to find some new clothes. That's what I, <laughs> I'm sure I he's think, listening to this and we'll, we'll check yeah, it out. I'm so. sure he is. Please, Put a little spice in your life. <laughs> Take it a little adventure. Go crazy. Buy some jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Marie, if you had a tweet or an Instagram or a post that would go viral, what would you want to say to the world? It's going to sound cliche, but um, everything that I that I like like to post, everything I like to put out there, I really like to reinforce the idea of being original and to not be afraid of being different because in countries, especially like Panama, there's a strong idea of having to fit in and having to wear what your friends are wearing or acting like the, your, your friends are acting. So it really limits people's creativity and their ability to express who they really are. And it all spread, it all comes from this fear of being different. So what I always like to promote is the idea of what makes you different is what makes you special. So there's no reason to try to fit in. You know, you have to be, you have to be, to be number one, you need to be an odd number. You know, you have to be odd. So I, I, I would reinforce the idea of being original to be, you know, yourself as cliche as that sounds, but that's really what I'm all about. <laughs> Well, I think that's as good way as any to wrap up this chat. To to finish, can you give us your contact info, all the places that you can be found on the internet? Also, if you have any asks for our audience, anything that you would recommend that anyone listening to the show now does? Oh, okay. Well, uh, you can find me on my blog on the my website, www.thejoyoffashionblog.com. You can also find me on my social media on Instagram. I am also the Joy of Fashion blog. On Facebook, the same. Sadly, on Twitter, I am the Joy of Fashion and not the Joy of Fashion blog because it was taken. So, yeah, please follow me. That'd be great to uh, get in contact with uh, everyone listening to this interview. And I would like to, I hope that this interview was helpful and in inspiring people to. Realize that you can be an entrepreneur and you can make the business of your dreams if you just work hard enough at it. The opportunities are there. You just got to go and grab them. So, yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. I really enjoyed the interview. Marie, muchas gracias para compartir un abrazo. Oh, un abrazo, Justine. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs. Our guest today was Marie McGrath from the Joy of Fashion Blog. 
Please follow Liberty Entrepreneurs at libertyentrepreneurs.com. You can find us on facebook.com slash libertyentrepreneurs and Twitter at Liberty E Podcast. For those of you in the Denver area, on May 30th, Liberty Entrepreneurs is co-hosting a live meetup with Roger Ver, also known as Bitcoin Jesus, at Southern Hospitality in downtown Denver at 6 p.m. Hope to see you all there. Until the next time.